What's up, Patricia? Oop. What's up, Niv? What's up, Patricia? Apparently, I, I missed my uh, the let the scheduled live stream by a couple of uh, by about thirty seconds, but um, that I guess is the uh, what I had had to deal with, so I had to reset up the live stream. But um, hopefully, everyone is having an awesome Saturday. I am. Uh, I feel like I am. Uh, I'm. I've been at home with my daughters, my three daughters. Um, having daddy daughter day but all three are napping at this current moment so um that's the good news um but yeah i was um i wanted to kind of bring uh how many are in my house i have three three daughters uh five three and a half and 18 months so um my house is uh crazy i like to say it's chaotic uh pink and purple um pink and purple chaos is what i i live with at home and i and i work in the world of chaos which i which i'm okay with um but uh, hopefully everybody's have a good Saturday. Um, what I was gonna, um, I'm guessing a lot of people have heard about um, Catch, K-A-T-C-H. Um, oh, within 15, oh, within 15 minutes of scheduled time. Oh, thanks Nev, I didn't realize that. So even though I didn't hit the stream, I had to recreate a new um, stream, it still gets, the, the ones who subscribe to the schedule post still get notified within 15 minutes. Wow, that's awesome news! I need to put that in my uh, in my slide share presentation that goes live this week on Meerkat. Um, I'm doing a the power of live streaming uh, keynote this week, and I uh, I need to put that in there as a as a tip because I didn't realize that. But um, yeah, so what I, I you know kind of I actually heard it through um, Robert Scoble had actually had messaged on Facebook um, about catch. Um, having a, a minor setback, I guess, for all intents and purposes. Um, and the fact that right now um, the catch videos are offline, but I've heard that, um, that that will change soon. But I think part of this discussion that I was kind of uh, ticked off about is, um, you know, there's a difference and an understanding on, um, you know, playing nice with APIs and following policies. And then there's a separate function that says, we're gonna make a power play against the startups, against the guys that are trying uh, to compete and innovate uh, at the same speed of the big boys. So, um, you know, I, I've got tons of, uh, since that news has gone on, I think I've probably had 40 Twitter DMs, um, a couple uh, Facebook message conversations, um, really around just this whole concept of, you know, what does that mean? You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, you can't always re rely on another technology or another software or, um, you know, when you, it's a, it's the risk you take in the API friendly uh, world. And, and you might be right. That, that is definitely something that we, we have to be um, understand. But at the same time, um, allowing API friendly apps to work together. And those of you that, you know, from an API perspective, it just means that software allows uh, their data to be, to be passed um, to other tools. So, so other tools can leverage their data, their community, uh, depending on what the API is actually opening up to allow. And, you know, and that really, that's things like, you know, anytime we're integrating, um, you know, your LinkedIn data into your social CRM, or anytime that you're logging in with, um, you know, uh, credentials and you're seeing your Twitter um, content published there, there's an API um, conversation going on. And, and really part of that is, you know, essential for a lot of these companies, a lot of these brands, a lot of these startups, for them to allow them to grow and focus on their, on their niche, there, it kind of is, it is a, it is kind of the cool spawn of what I kind of loved about um, what had happened to Meerkat recently was all of these other companies, all these other um, websites kind of popping up talking about how they're um, kind of complementing, complementing the, um, the Meerkat uh, concept. And I think that is um, something that can't really be underestimated because I think to be able to scale, to be able to compete, um, I think they're, the idea of playing nicely, being able to um, integrate and pass information via API protocols, I think that's essential today. I don't think, I think the less companies, the less brands that start taking this to um, control and hone down their API calls, um, I think that's a bad news for, um, for all of us. It's bad news for the user, I think it's bad news for the startup. I think it's bad news for um, the whole the whole idea because I think for you know the speed of innovation, the fastest we're we're dealing with you know technology change. I think it's essential for companies and brands today to be able be able to be API friendly. Um, now to caveat that, 
Um, I was part of the OpenStack commu community for cloud computing. Um, I presented at the cloud uh, OpenStack convention uh, twice last year, um, really working with the idea of open standards. Um, and I'm not saying that open standards works for everybody and OpenStack was ready for everybody, but I do believe in the power of leveraging data, complementing each other with data, um, to really drive innovation and you know focus on user needs and especially if it's not in a direct line of competition and it's more of a complementary thing that you know only um, empowers the community I think that's key to um, future software success I mean we have um, with so many tools and so much software and so many things that we're plugging into um, the conversation has to start to be about how do we integrate all these things so that people be more productive not so that we have three million apps on our phone because none of them are playing nicely together. So for me, I think this part of this that I initially was kind of um, hoping that I didn't hear about or see, and I still haven't heard um, any of the exact details. But if it's a policy violation, um, you know that's understandable. Uh, I don't blame YouTube on that. But um, YouTube's been known; they actually shut down a couple of my videos and streams um, within the last week um, for no reason other than the fact they said that they had thought they had heard copyrighted music inside of it, which they did not. Um, you know, and for me, that's you know, hey, that's fine. You're governing your own um, your own platform, but you know, I think there also needs to be an element of if you're going to shut someone down, you're going to put you're going to pull their entire access. I think there has to be clear conversation, clear communication to that company, to that API, to that to that brand so that they know why they're kind of being shut down. Just pulling the plug is just bad customer service. And that's actually a whole different rant that I'm going to have a blog post about this week is about Apple and Google feeling that they don't need to really focus on customer service and social integration. Um, but that's a whole other conversation because I, I think it's sad that YouTube doesn't ever reply um, to Twitter comments. Uh, Apple doesn't even have a, a footprint on uh, on social media or Twitter um, for that sake. But you know, for me, um, you know, thanks JKPL. Um, what's up, Vincenzo? Um, but for me, I think this whole conversation comes down to you know, it's. I don't. I, I think competition breeds innovation, and the people that that are best benefited by competition, like Meerkat and Periscope, like Android and, and Apple, the people that are that benefit the most are us, the users. The user community benefits the most because you know what? That drives competition. I would argue that we'd probably be stuck with like the iPhone five features if Android wasn't pushing the envelope like they were. And I think that is part of the fair play. And I'm all about, um, I, I think there's advantages on Periscope. There's advantages on, on Meerkat. I'm using both of them simultaneously. I've done, um, I did two Periscopes last night. Um, for me, I think the big part of it really comes down to, um, you know, that is truly understandable is that you have to be able to, I, I want fair competition. And it probably isn't fair to begin with because it's Meerkat versus Twitter and Periscope, but at least make it a fair competition to where you're not, you know, pleading for your celebrities to use, um, you know, only their tool or you're going to your your partners or your, or your alliance alliances and saying, pull the plug on here. Let's not let you, you know, let the, the little guy access your API or those kind of things. I think that is foul play. And that all that does to me is that endears me to the startup even more. And it creates me to become an advocate and do things like this on my Saturday afternoon when my daughters are napping, which would usually mean I would lay down and fall asleep. Um, I wanted to jump on here and kind of uh, stress my point. But um, Fanzo, why aren't we having this discussion on Google Hangout right now? Yeah, no kidding. Well, it was a little impromptu, Vincenzo, and I can't stay too long because my daughters are sleeping. But um, yeah, and Vincenzo, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Niv posted in there before that if you uh, jump on your uh, – if you miss the live stream button – for your scheduled post, as long as you as long as you post live within 15 minutes of that scheduled post, uh, the subscribers are still notified. So uh, that's actually some pretty cool information that I did not know. Um, and I guess there's kind of another piece of this is I was on a Periscope earlier today watching, and I remember I'm studying both of these platforms to really understand how we can leverage them best to do better storytelling. And I was on one of them today and it was talking about the five tips for how you can um, grow your following and grow your viewership on Periscope. And one of them was about gamifying. It was it was making a competition that the that the streamer would follow the person that gives them the most hearts during a uh, live event. I think that's crap. 
Um, that's really, I mean, what value does that have for your followers? And then they're just playing a game. And then what value does that have for your Twitter? I, w- I don't want to follow you on Twitter if that's how you give away your followers, because what value is that to me? I think that's, that is complete crap on both sides. I, I was very disappointed to hear that as one of the, the things on there. Another one was talking about, um, you know, the sad element of, um, you know, on Periscope, you have to have um, the first thumbnail is only what the camera is facing at first when it goes live and it only uses the back camera, which is annoying as crap. But um, they were also talking about um, adding multiple uh, hashtags into your Periscope uh, name so that it could uh, hit the trending per- uh, Twitter uh, Paris, uh, the trending Twitter uh, hashtags, I think are both um, just truly um pathetic. So, um, I, you know, and I think this whole conversation is, I think it's, I, I think it has to be fair play. I think, you know, tools like catch, um, added an element that I couldn't have, um, you know, for me, you know, my time is valuable and I've done video blogs and I've been doing, um, video content for years and I needed to find one. I needed to find a, a location and a place for me to actually be able to, um, send some of my viewers that can't watch me live. So I created the, which is isocialfans.com backslash meerkat. And it has some of my pictures on Meerkat. It has some of my my thoughts on Meerkat. But it also has all of my videos. And it used to say 25 up there where it says playlist. But now it only says five. And those five that are up there are actually the five that are Google Plus Hangouts that I recorded while we were on Meerkat. Actually, it was Vincenzo and I for two of them. And then um, I was doing uh, three other ones. So unfortunately... Um, you know, right now it's only showing five of it, which should be, I think there's 22, I think total, um, videos that I did on Meerkat that I saved for my community to, um, you know, leverage later. So I, the good news is, um, I don't think it's something that, I think this is definitely temporary. Um, I'm excited to, to see kind of, um, when this comes back online, uh, and it might've actually drawn more attention to the concept of, um, a, the, a, the need for API friendly, com- uh, you know, integration with tools like Meerkat. I mean, I, I would love to, um, from my standpoint, I, I talk about it all the time. I use everybody that comments. So if you comment down below in my um, Meerkat, it posts to Twitter. And then I actually take all of those people and put them onto a Twitter list. And then I actually run data and analytics against everybody who has commented on my Meerkats to understand um, how I could provide better value. What, what are the new hashtags that they're following that maybe I was missing? Um, where these people's demographics are that are people that I wasn't familiar with before on Twitter. And so I'm leveraging the integration between um, the comments being posted inside of Meerkat on the Twitter. Uh, unfortunately, Mir- Periscope doesn't even give you that option, which I think is a, is a major limitation for me um, you know, in the whole piece. And, and this kind of goes into that API conversation is I want to leverage this data. If I'm going to spend my time um, creating this video, providing value to my community, not only do I want to save it so I can have other people use it, but I want to be able to take these comments and learn from them, take these comments and truly build on additional engagement. So um, can you please give a 30 second uh, overview on Catch? So yes, so Catch, um, if you look at Catch Cats, it's from the parent company Seenco, S-E-E-N-C-O on Twitter. Um, if you put the hashtag Catch, K-A-T-C-H, um, at, in your stream or when your stream is over, you put that out there. Everybody who puts that that's commenting on uh, about catch will actually get a uh, a link to a YouTube video that they actually uh, take the stream and post it to a YouTube video. Now it is on the, the Catch Cats um, YouTube account, but they 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 tweet you whenever that video is live, and then you actually have a recorded version of your Meerkat session that is up on YouTube. And then I just have a if this then that statement that says anytime that um, one is a Catch um, video is has my name and the and the hashtag Catch in a video that's posted to YouTube, automatically put it into my playlist. Therefore, my audience automatically gets that content. Um, nice to meet you as well. Thanks. That's yeah, that's me. Um, I'm always trying to leverage and get the most out of the community side. So for catch, that's kind of the big piece there. And so a little bit while ago, um, we were kind of notified that uh, that catch had been their access had been temporarily pulled from their YouTube accounts to where right now the YouTube videos that are saved are just, um, we can't access them. They're not deleted, although it does show deleted when you go onto my YouTube channel. Um, and I can show you that what that looks like real quick, but um, I, I do have faith and I do have kind of some um, knowledge or tips that um, they are, that isn't going away permanently. And it's just um, a, a minor roadblock in the, uh, in the bigger scheme. But if you go here, so I have um, here, we can, I'll show you real quick. But um, so this is my YouTube channel, of course, all my different playlists for all the different um, I have uh, liked videos, the Meerkat one, which I'll show you, Smack Talk, which is my podcast, 
Social Business Hour, which is the Twitter hangout that I run each week, interviews, collaboration, and keynotes, um, some of my favorite videos, my iSocial Talks, which is my video blog. I have all those up here. So I actually created this one here. Um, and as you can see, these are all of my meerkats. Now, the ones that say deleted, of course, are, um, and actually a couple of them are still there. Interesting. Uh, I wonder, oh, maybe they're just showing it. It's probably cached information. But here, you can at least see what it showed up with before. So catch, when they actually posted it, the, the company name, Catch Cats, would actually have the, the video. And then in the, the show notes actually tells you what I had as the, um, the name of the meerkat session. And so what I was doing was actually just having this automatically added to this playlist. And then I had this playlist embedded inside of my landing page, which is isocialfans.com slash meerkat. So, um, so when do you do your social media hours? So social business hour um, is every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and then I do a podcast every week called Smack Talk, which is S-M-A-C-T-A-L-K. It's available on iTunes Google Play Store, um, Storyfy, all or um, Storyfy. That was that was the wrong one. Um, uh, I can't remember. The, all the podcast streaming apps have that on there. But yeah, Social Business Hour. The hashtag is sbizhour um, on Twitter. Uh, here I can show you the landing page real quick. But yeah, this week we actually have um, the head of um, LinkedIn marketing, and this is an example of the session that we had this past week. Um, with the CEO and founder of Socito and Damien, one of his uh, lead reps. So, you know, from uh, what's up, Ryan? Great stuff, man. I, I was following your uh, meerkat in uh, the streets of uh, Maryland the other day. I know you're, I, was, I actually lived in DC for uh, seven years before I moved to Arizona. So I'm familiar with that area very well. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Love to hear more about your, uh, your, information with the uh the politicians out there but yeah so for me i think this you know what catch is able to bring and uh, I'll, I'll give them some love here real quick uh, the the parent company um and they've done a great job they've engaged um they've engaged me for a long while back but um so this is the the parent company uh who actually built catch cats so scene.co and as you can see right there that's their uh they actually have catches um Twitter handle just reposted. So here, I'll give you some love on the catch side as well. So if you, and here, that's the description of what you actually have to do. And, you know, I guess the other part is, unfortunately, I think everybody's talking about uh, which is better, Periscope or Meerkat, and I refuse to say one is better. It's too early to tell, and, I, and I'm um, testing benefits of both. I'm using both of them regularly right now. Um, but one of the things is Periscope does not give you this option at all. Um, that was kind of a misnomer. Um, it was on uh, Robert Scoble's uh, Facebook page. Someone was kind of blasting Meerkat saying, well, Periscope has it, just another reason why Periscope's better. Periscope doesn't. Periscope allows you to save it to your camera roll, and then they give you, they post it, they keep it live for 24 hours after you uh, stop your live stream for your viewers to watch it 24 hours on Periscope's server. You can't embed it. There's no hyperlink. It's only people that are integrated or are following you on Periscope that watch it in your Periscope app. After the 24 hours, the video disappears. So there is no, um, you know, I would say evergreen life of your Periscope video unless you're saving it to your camera roll and then uploading it ever uh, later on. What's up, Jeff Goldberg? Nice to see you jump in here. I was enjoying your uh, yours before. Yeah, Jeff. Um, I was sharing the news before. It's not, it's only temporary. So getting shut down by cat for a catch is only a um, a temp. I found out that it's only a temporary for right now. So it's something that um, and they haven't been deleted. So it's more the fact that they've uh, been removed or unlisted um, for the time being. But um, it's just a temporary shutdown. But it is kind of a shot to me um, in the idea that um, yes. We all sh let's all be sure to share the tweet from catch. Yes, I agree. I just post. I just showed that. Um, I just showed that uh, tweet just now. And actually, the nice guys over there had actually retweeted my, which, um, and this is on this is on the catch account, but you know, I put an example of my, uh, of unfortunately my tweets um, being uh, kind of shut down. And that's Robert Scoble's tweet right there. Um, but yeah, the diary, for those of you that, um, I, I don't think I'm gonna show it all, but yeah, Robert Scoble actually had a, a long post and we've been, there's been tons of debate and, and dialogue going on in there. Um, threads, but um, so he actually posted this on um, Facebook, and uh, you know you can see a, a ton of the comments. Um, 
kind of going through um, everybody from Chris Voss, so I know who's also a meerkatter. Um, of course, myself, Theo, um, Joss Elman. So we are all kind of just just discussing. Um, yes, that was good stuff. Um, but yeah, we were just discussing that. Funky Fairy, what's up? I love what you guys are doing. Funky Fairy, you guys are doing awesome stuff on Meerkat. I love that you're streaming your business, giving people, letting people watch when you're um, you're stitching uh, different clothing, little insights into your company and your culture. Uh, I've been jumping in there uh, periodically, and I, I love what you guys are doing, the Funky Fairy. I will be um, using you guys as a, a great example in my presentation this week um, that I'll be giving on the power of live streaming and the value of live streaming. So um, I will definitely be giving you some love, the Funky Fairy, because I thought it was really cool. Uh, cool. I had not been keeping up, so it's great to see you sharing their reactions. Yes. So, um, yes, I, I've actually, it's pretty nice that, um, that the fellows over at Catch uh, have been kind of, we've had a, a DM going on um, that they've set up with a, a couple of us and um, just kind of make, pretty much giving us some information, asking for tips, feedback on their tool, how people are using it. And um, for me, oh, thanks, Dave. Um, but yeah, so that um, so I kind of got that information. Um, they were still kind of getting exact information from YouTube on the why, but I did hear um, that it's just a temporary thing right now. But I wanted I wanted to get out there in front of it, and you know I jumped on here. Um, mainly, I scheduled the, the um, stream for my daughter's nap time because I just wanted to kind of bring attention to the idea that you know I think we have the, the big boys have to be careful how they actually share, integrate, how they um, how they actually put the conversation because you know what um a lot of people are gonna yes meerkat love for sure um a lot of people are gonna um kind of jump to the big fish all the time right they're gonna jump to whoever has the bigger money the bigger brand and, and that's fine but it, i think there's plenty of us that want to we believe in the power of startups we've seen startups go from what they were to you know the facebook's of the world um and if it's not fair competition if the bullies or the big guys are bullying the little guys i think they have to remember that uh, that'll actually push a lot of people away from um, their tool and it'll rally the startup community around them. And to be honest, um, Meerkat has gone out of their way to be really involved in, in the community, um, be very um, kind of engaged, uh, the opposite of what I believe Periscope has done. And I think that's a, a piece that you can't underestimate, the power of community, the power of advocates, um, the fact that majority of people that are on Meerkat actually go in and share other people's Meerkat streams just because it's, it's a community type feeling. Um, I think that's important. And um, just because you're the big boy, big player on campus, I think you can't underestimate community and you also can't um, come, come across as a bully. Even if it's not, you're not being a bully, um, I think you have to be almost extra sensitive. So when you're, when you're pulling something like a, the, the Twitter social graph or you're pulling something like you're no longer going to allow um, you know, some of the auto post or uh, you're going to limit the API call, you better have a freaking good reason and you better publicize that reason because I guarantee that if you don't, don't, the first thing that a majority of us are going to think of is, wow, you were threatened to where you had to take a bully type action. And I think that is sad. I think it's sad in all cases. And I'm not just talking about Meerkat and Periscope. I think it's sad. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of a tool called Nimble, N-I-M-B-L-E. -E. It's a social CRM tool. And because of the sales forces and the big boys out there, um, uh, LinkedIn actually had uh, throttled back their API and what they are allowing people to do with their data. And someone like Nimble, who is providing amazing value to their community, got got their, a lot of their feed and data cut off, which now really limits them as a tool. And it's sad because they weren't even competing with Salesforce. They weren't. If you were already going to Salesforce, you weren't actually even thinking of Nimble. Nimble was an option for like a personal brand and a smaller uh, smaller scale company. But sadly, by uh, LinkedIn doing that, that I mean, tr trust me, it, it rallied me to be freaking passionately pissed off about it and be more of an advocate for um, Nimble. Um, what's up, Haroon? How's it going? I, um, oh, yes, you agree. Spot on. Oh, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, I assumed you would agree. I know you've, uh, you and I had a couple conversations um, here and there. It was a while ago, but um, yeah, I think it's all about, you know, it's all about, you know, fair shot. I think the API economy is huge. I think the idea that we can pass data so that we can better leverage the data. I mean, that's what I do, um, you know, when it comes to what I'm doing as a brand. I work with companies on how they can take social data like Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook data and how they can leverage that in HR, how they can leverage that in product management, how they can add more features to their tools. 
how the influencer data should impact um, who they're hiring, what they're, what decisions they're making. Um, and for me, that's uh, it's all about how can we can leverage that data that exists so that we can be more productive and we can do some uh, more innovative things with it. And unfortunately, when companies do things like limit the, the API for no reason, I understand limiting um, uh, intellectual property or wanting to um, you know slowly start out of the gate with a I would say a smaller API open API and then slowly open it up so that you could um, you know uh, give access to more things. Completely understandable. But if you're limiting taking away things for no damn good reason and um and the other and to be honest part of it is you're not educating you're not providing telling people why i think that is pretty pathetic um so nice of you to see someone pass so passionate someone clone brian uh, i appreciate that yeah i'm pretty passionate for what i do i love what i do i love being able to tell my story and if i can leverage my influence my my little influence that i do have or my um my social credibility or my name or my voice um why the hell would i not i i'm not afraid to stand up for what i believe in um especially if it comes into bullying or the fact that um you know someone's just in my opinion not doing something in what i believe is is the right most educated manner so um big fan of your stuff oh thanks man i appreciate that yes i'm um i've had amazing success on meerkat uh, it's crazy um not only crazy engagement, finding a lot of new people to um, have value in, but I now have four presentations over the next three weeks about Meerkat and the power of live streaming. I've also got two additional keynotes because they were actually able to watch me uh, give a keynote presentation last week um, at one of the events. And because I was able to live stream that event, someone actually watched that and hired me to do an event in June. Um, so to me, that is ROI of Meerkat right there for you. So um, the added value is so important. I love this community. I want to see it grow and improve. I agree, and I don't. And I don't even think I. I. I think having Periscope as a competitor is a great thing. It brings extra attention to live streaming. Um, I actually was testing um, some new app that actually uh, posts to Facebook. I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but I can show you real quick on my stream um, what it looks like. Uh, let's see. Um, it's not very good, and it, to me, it's not any different than. Um, but here you go. So this is one that to Facebook. So it's called Stream A Go Social. So what I did was I tested the live stream this morning to Facebook while watching um, my daughter. So here you can actually see that the live stream that actually posts to Facebook is what this one is. Um, apparently the app came out in the beginning of April, but nobody had used it, or at least nobody that I knew of was using it. So I w jumped on it this morning. So this was me streaming, just <laughs> sitting in my living room with my daughters um, this morning. Um, just testing the functionality. Um, I mean, it's it's in no way a competition because um, it posts the link just like a YouTube video would. Um, there's no way to actually see who's viewing it or engage with them while you're doing the live stream. It does post the live stream and allow you to tag people in Facebook when you're actually streaming, but um, it's far from, my, in my opinion, even being a tool that is um, a competition. But what I was saying was the idea of the value of live streaming, it's been validated. I mean, it was validated when Twitter cut off the, the, the social graph to Twitter, to Meerkat because it showed that Twitter was paying attention. Meerkat was no joke. And trust me, I was at South by Southwest. Um, that's how I, I, I would say I, that's how I launched onto the map from a Meerkat perspective as I was averaging, a, you know, 300 people watching me do a recap and a preview of different days at South by Southwest while I was there presenting. So, um, you know, for me, that was a, a big change. Yeah, Meerkat is, um, from a live streaming perspective, uh, I've been using Google Hangout on air for years. I actually monetize them. That's my business. My business is selling sponsorships to Google Hangouts, Twitter chats, podcasts. Um, that's the media company that I'm in business doing. And that's all, you know, live content, real engaged comment content with your community. But um, Ustream always existed. And it wasn't something that I was leveraging because it wasn't uh, mobile to mobile. It wasn't integrating it with, um, you know, the true integration of these tools. Um, and so when, for me, when um, Meerkat came out, it was the it was mobile. It was integrated with an existing social network. It was extremely easy to post. It posted live to your um, Twitter feed and it focused on the most important aspect, in my opinion, which is the engagement right here. Um, without the comments, without the engagement, the back and forth, I think this doesn't survive. So um, that's definitely one that I think of that is uh, 
Might YouTube have some updated live stream plans of its own? Possibly. I mean, they already do. It's, it's Google Hangouts on Air. It just doesn't have mobile. It's not, I mean, Google Hangouts on Air are awesome. I live and die by those things, but um, it's not mobile. So you're missing a huge opportunity because people have to be on their um, laptop to configure them, laptop to actually manage them from a, uh, a management perspective. Yes, you can view them via the YouTube app on your phone, but it's not the same uh, concept. But um Oh, Funky Fair. Yes, you saw me and Gary V. Yes, that was funny. That was um, that was pretty. That was I think that was one of the better experiences I had. The amount of people that actually um, were watching through Gary V's feed whenever Gary V and I were chatting, um, which was definitely a cool experience um, there at South by Southwest. Um, yes, indeed, has been watching and engaging with much of my content. Yes, I mean the engagement and. Um, collaboration and the community aspect that exists on um, on Meerkat, to my, in my opinion, is kind of um, better than anybody else that's out there. And so here's a good example. So I'm going to show you guys what I do right now.